This is a study on posterizing simple values using a complex image. What I'd recommend is following the same steps that you would do with a bark drawing where you're creating a contour line of all of the various shapes and dividing the shapes. But first off, we need to get the tools you need to be able to do this drawing effectively. First off, you need a drawing utensil. Here I have graphite, this is charcoal, and then I have lumograph black. I'm gonna show you how the difference between all these. In a second, I have a couple of erasers, detailed erasers, and a kneaded eraser. Kneaded erasers are fun. This one's pretty old, but it'll work. I also need my reference to be able to draw from and composition started. And before I start working on the composition, I just want to show you the difference between these three pencils. So if I take this Primo charcoal, it's a B hardness, and I come into the top here and I create some value. I'm holding it at a steep angle and going back and forth as I'm drawing it to try to create some type of flat value. That's the charcoal. This next one is the Lumograph black. It doesn't sound as scratchy as the charcoal, and this is a 2B, so it's pretty soft. Not as soft as the Primo charcoal. And here's graphite. Graphite is also a 2B. So hopefully you can see the difference between all three of these, graphite, Mars, black, and then the charcoal. The charcoal is a darker value which is totally fine versus the other two. I used the same amount of pressure, held them towards the end of the pencil to be able to create softer value transitions. And you can see that the charcoal goes darker. So when you're drawing this out, you don't wanna draw it out with the darkest value. You wanna draw it out with something that is a mid value so you can see the shapes and lines. So I will start off with this graphite pencil and draw out the general composition and break down the shapes. So just like any other drawing, you'd want to create an envelope around the object that you're trying to draw. General envelope is seven or eight straight lines that you'll divide up into smaller and smaller shapes and lines to create a good general contour. But I'm going to do that with all these major shapes also that are coming around the composition, the ground, the perspective, the wall shape, all those are gonna be divided. But before I actually do that, I need to make sure that the composition is set up correctly and use a light pencil and use a light hand. If you are drawing with a heavy hand, that usually means that you're having your hand towards the end of the pencil like this, and you're putting a lot of weight in the tip of that. If you move your hand further away from the tip of the pencil, you'll get much lighter value transitions when you're drawing. So I'm gonna just, Come in and draw this in really quick. Now that I have that drawn in, I'm just going to compare and see if I have my width pretty close. No way. I need to go wider. What the heck? How could I be so far off? I should just stop drawing. I'm totally teasing. I need to make this line straight though. There we go. What I'm doing is I'm looking at the distance between these two lines that I'm creating. It was getting wider down here than it was up here. And so I'm trying to draw a parallel line with the line that is already established, which is right there. And that looks pretty parallel. And then when I'm coming over here, I need to widen it about a half inch almost. All right, let's double check the measuring. slightly too wide. I'll just come in just a little bit more, maybe a line width. So all I'm using is the tip of my finger to line up with this outside line, and I'm using the tip of the pencil to figure out the other edge of this line. I'm holding that still and bringing it over here. The other alternative that you could use is a ruler. What? Look at that. I have a ruler. And here it is three and seven eighths. And here, 
it is four. So if we go to the top, four. So I made it a little bit more narrow. It is four inches. Okay, so we need to go slightly wider down towards the bottom here. All right, there's my four. This will come down. Okay, now just clean it up. I'm gonna double check the height. We are about six. We are definitely six. Now that we have the composition figured out, we have the proportions right. Of course, you notice that I drew this freehand. I highly recommend drawing it freehand. If you don't get it right, measure to check your proportion. Don't just check your proportions and then draw them in and make measurements on every little part and draw it in. That will take a long time. I want you to make a guess when you're drawing it. I highly recommend making a guess before you start um, erasing or, or even measuring. So I'm going to look at the big general shapes. I'm squinting down to look at these shapes. And this one sticks out the most to me, along with this one that comes at this angle. So I'm going to start down here and create this triangular shape. I'm looking at where this ends to there and where that ends to there. So if I indicate it, it will probably be right about there. Same thing with this, maybe just a little bit higher. Okay, before I put too much detail in, this is a good little simplified structure of the drawing. I'm going to do some measuring because I'm not convinced on some of my proportions. I feel like the figure is too small. This also helps if you're looking at it straight on, kind of like the camera is. I'm looking at it from an angle, so it's distorting my view, and I'm not able to see the depth very well. So maybe I'll change the angle every once in a while so I can actually look at it. Now I'm just going to take my finger against the pencil. That'll be good enough for this exercise and see if I have my general proportions correct. So from the edge there, oh, so close. This does go in just a little bit. And from the top to the edge there, Again, so very close, just a little bit off. It's right there. And then the seam or the angle change for the wall. Mine's just a little bit too wide. So I'll bring that in for about the height. Snap, I was way off. Okay, a lot of these were um, just subtly off, so I'm gonna make some corrections. Notice also when I'm drawing this that I'm using straight lines or straight-ish lines. They're not perfectly straight. I'm going back and forth a couple of times to be able to get a slightly darker value so that I can see those shapes a little bit more.
the whole time I'm drawing this, I'm looking for alignment. I'm looking at where this ellipse is in relationship to this ellipse. Where's this ellipse in relationship to this one? I'm trying to make sure that I'm not, if I see that this is only a quarter of an inch here, just like it is there, but then I draw it a half an inch down here, that's gonna to be too big of a shape. So I'm constantly going back and reevaluating what are my shapes looking like in relationship to the other shapes and proportions. And I'm feeling pretty good about what I'm doing so far. There are a few things that need to be corrected or changed. Like some angles, I need to adjust this so that it feels like his chest is sticking out as opposed to being flat. So here I can take a couple of straight lines to indicate that this form is turning like that. And then um, I need to have it drop a little bit more on the side here. So I have a lot of good basic general information that I have established in here. I'm not gonna worry about all the little details that are going on inside this window opening. There's a rug that is sitting right there, a hookah or smoking thing that's sitting right here. And then there is fabric that I'm just gonna bunch together right here. because none of this is really, it's important because I need to get this, these shapes figured out, but they're not paramount to this study. And this study is solely on values. Once I have these shapes figured out and generally established like I do, uh, then I will come in and I will put in the local value of some of these shapes. I'll just divide this shape a little bit more and that shape a little bit more. Um, I don't care about all the detail that is going down in here. I'm simplifying it and saying where is um, this walkway in relationship to the dirt. I don't care about the division of all the little rocks. I don't care about the hand shapes. Um, there is this darker value that's kind of shooting out from his shoulder so that might be an important object if I can get the slope right. A little bit steeper of an angle. Instead of filling in values, I just drew a bunch of lines to be able to create that shape. And I'll come in here and erase. I'll erase a couple of other shapes or lines I want to clean up this little area here and really get those shapes figured out. All right, is it totally perfect? No, but the general idea is there and the general shapes are there. Okay, just like any other poster study, when I'm looking at this image, I am looking and seeing where are my whites? Where's my whitest white? Well, amazingly enough, the widest white is probably right here on the top of his head. It might even be this skirt that he's wearing. I'm gonna call it a skirt. I'm sure there's a very specific name for this, but I'm just gonna call it a skirt. So the skirt looks to be a light value. It is surrounded by slightly darker values, but none of the values here are as white as the white of the paper. So that tells me I need to put value in this entire scene and fill it with some value. Now, there are two different types of values. You can do your com comparative values, which are taking this value and making this whole thing just as dark as that. Or you can do values that are based off of relationships. So I might not wanna make this a value two in my drawing. I might wanna make it a value three and compress those values. So this would be like a value three, and then these values in the in the lights here would be more of a value seven and everything would be in between value seven and value three from the lightest light to the darkest dark or if i push these values i could even go darker than what is printed out here and make this a value one 
but I, I don't want to make it darker than that because then I have to work harder. So is working harder really going to make that image that much better? Or if I just get the general block in of my values figured out, will that be more important? So I'm gonna start with putting in some of those darkest values. And when I squint down, this is one value structure. This is one value, this is one value, this is one value, that is one value, and this is one value. So I'm gonna put in those darker values and indicate what general value I'm gonna, I'm gonna want. So instead of using the graphite, which I used to draw in with, I'm gonna use the Mars black start to indicate some of these values. Now, when I'm creating these values, I wanna go back and forth at a fast rate and try to start at one point and end at another. I don't wanna go over the whole entire thing. I wanna figure out what value is going to be my darkest value and how I'm going to create those. All right, now when I squint down and I compare this value to that one, not even close. So I'm gonna take some time, I'm gonna put in some of these darker, flatter values, and I actually might get a softer version of this, which would be the 4B. The 4B is going to be softer, it will create darker values. I could even use charcoal and get the value close, just in one layer. But for this reason, because I like the nice smooth values that this creates, I'm gonna use the Mars Black. Now when I'm coming in and doing a second layer, I'm going to change my angle. So instead of going back and forth over the same thing, I'm gonna slightly change my angle and come in at about 10 degrees. Now I need to push these values even darker, so I'm gonna change my angle at another 10 degrees. I have a little, uh, little rock or pebble that is stuck under there. Now you can see I'm holding it towards the end, not all the way to the very end, but I wanna slowly build up these values and um, approach the values with caution. I feel like it's a lot easier to slowly get to the right value than it is to jump to the value and then have to erase and fix the value issues. All right, the nice thing about using these is you can come in and erase some of the lines that have gone beyond the start and stop point that you created. That's assuming if you have good paper and this paper is not very good. All right, I'm not able to get too much darker with this. I mean, I could push really, really hard and get very, very dark, but I'm gonna show you something that happens when you add charcoal on top of this black pencil. Okay, so now it's starting to get darker in value and it sits on top of the black pencil a lot better than it does um, with graphite. If you were to draw this out with graphite and push really hard with a lighter graphite, it creates a waxy surface and the charcoal is unable to stick to the waxy surface because the binder in charcoal is not as strong as the binder in Graphite. And come in and clean up some of these edges. All right, the next thing that I'm gonna do is I've started to indicate some of these shapes in these darker values. And if you're really gonna keep it into a poster study, you wanna just keep these shapes flat and simple. And so I will come in and indicate just some change in shape. 
And then also some change in value, like here is a little bit too light in relationship to the there. But I'm going to keep this all one flat value, or at least attempt, attempt to. I also know that this is too light in value, comparing those two. This is still too light in value, but I don't want to go much darker. I don't think I'll be able to get a good surface if I go much darker because this paper is just printer paper and printer paper does not hold up very well for drawings. At least that's been my experience. Maybe I just push too hard. Okay, so the rest of these values need to come down. And I will just use the black, the Mars black. Just a little bit darker. Now I have the rest of these to go darker and I will just take this shape and fill it in with the flat value. Now, if you can tell here, when I created this ellipse, I had a series of ellipses, ellipses, ellipsi. Either way, I had these ellipses that I drew in here, but now I just have this lighter value and this lighter value in relation to the lighter values that I see here. And when I squint down, all of these other values flatten out and become one simple shape. So I'm gonna draw them as one simple shape. Same thing with this shape, darker shadow shape, another darker shadow shape, and lighter value with middle value and middle value. So I'll take this and divide up those lighter values and darker values. Now it's the same thing with this whole shape. I'm gonna make this all one value, and then this in one value, and this one darker value. All right, I'm moving to the charcoal because I need to go slightly darker in value. All right, now that I have most of these big general values established, there are a couple parts that I need to darken down a little bit more. I'm gonna do a value going across the whole entire drawing to decrease the whole value structure. So for right now, I'm gonna redefine some of these darker values and then go over it with an entire value. Okay, now I'm gonna go over the whole entire drawing with a slightly darker value. This is the Mars Black 2B. And I'll go over these lightest values to kind of kick everything down. OK, 
Okay, now I need to go uh, darker, so I'm gonna go to a softer Mars value. Now I'm going to go back to the charcoal because these values are not dark enough. I need to just put them down another couple values so that they look good in relationship to everything else. In terms of a value study, I feel like this is good enough. I have figured out where the general proportions are for the various objects. I've figured out how dark of a value some of these sections are versus how light of a value. I understand that I could go darker in value onto the side here. I could also go darker a little bit more here to create more of a gradient in some of these things, but in terms of a value study, when I look at this and I'm moving my eye back and forth, there are some errors to the drawing, but overall it reads pretty well to be the same type of image. I, I do have some slight proportions off and some slight shapes off, but the more and more time that I take to refine this, the better off it will actually look. But um, as of right now, I have spent about an hour working on this, maybe a little bit more over an hour, but I've gotten the shapes established, I've gotten the values established, and if I really wanted to come in and finish this up, I could. Couple of tips that I would recommend when you are working on your own drawing. Uh, first off, when you feel like you're done, come in and take a kneaded eraser and erase all of the little smudge marks that might have gotten on the page. If you don't want smudge marks on your page, put a piece of paper underneath your hand when you're drawing and it will decrease the amount of smudges. So that's one thing. Clean up your page after you're done. The other thing is make sure that you're striving to keep all of the values in check and all of the shapes in check. So there were times when I would come in and draw in a value and I would remove that shape because I'm putting value in there. And a line is the description between two different shapes. So it might be a light shape, it might be a shadow shape. The difference between a rock and the ground, it might be, uh, value difference, it might be shape difference, it might be object difference. Either way, the point is make sure that you try to not lose all of those shapes. You want to try to hold on to them as much as possible when you are drawing because if you lose them uh, you, you might have a hard time coming back or you might forget to come back and reestablish what those shapes and values look like. Um, I started to get into some details, but I didn't want to establish all of the details in the drawing because they are not important. Right now, it's just trying to get the general look and general shapes and general proportions because this is a poster study. Um, it's a really good start for a poster study, 
but um, I'd recommend not using cheap materials. So as you can see here with these, with this drawing paper, some of the charcoal was coming off in the drawing and I'm gonna have a hard time erasing without a nice hard eraser some of these edges. Like this creates a little halo that's coming off to the side. So I'll need to reestablish some of those shapes, but I feel like this is a good enough drawing to be able to show what needs to be done to establish a good solid drawing and uh, good shapes and proportions. So I hope that the demonstration was beneficial for you. If it wasn't, that really sucks. And I guess watch other videos on how to do this stuff. But majority of the time you want to keep the shapes flat and simple and hard edged. You want to go with big, big shapes and planes, squint down a lot, simplify those shapes and planes and um, leave or don't draw any details. If you have details, then it'll, you'll just run into issues. But like, for example, this part, the little highlight in that ellipse, I would love to put that in there, but it's not going to help me out. And it's not going to help out the drawing right now because then I'll have this beautiful little highlight that's sitting there and it will fall apart because all people want to do is look at that highlight. So I need to simplify some things to uh, make it look convincing in the shapes. But overall, I'm happy with how it turned out and I hope this was beneficial. Have an excellent day.